Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I just woke up and I felt I want to be able to say some things that I that I was thinking. I often think about very broad and complex, what would be complex, uh, simplified though. It's hard to explain, but I sort of get big, big panoramas of why things happen when I wake up sometimes. It's really amazing. Um, and so I feel I need to record it. I opened the internet and I found a commentary by one of my... Um, He's not a Facebook friend. He's somebody I'm in a group with who I think, I don't know if he runs a group or he's one of the administrators or um, moderators, perhaps. Uh, John in uh, African-American politics. And he has a story. He's posting a story from the New York Times that says, TripAdvisor warned White House in January of risks of a pandemic. One of the stories that has been uh, brought, you know, been talk, is getting talked about. And his commentary is, so if our intelligence community, a global health entity, World Health Organization community, our national medical agency, the Center for Disease Control, and even the White House trade advisors knew how serious the, this global pandemic would be, why did we delay in executing a nationwide response and chose to downplay instead the seriousness of this global medical pandemic? And there's a picture in, from the New York Times where you see everybody kind of lost before this situation, except the person that needs to say something is meditating on what he can possibly say to, all, to that situation. Um, and it is one of the things, you know, and the, the thought that comes to mind, because last night I was watching uh, a socialist, um, I don't know exactly what political current he is, but maybe I should go see his name and that would be easier. Okay, yeah, I was watching uh, Chris Hedges being interviewed um, last night. And, you know, like, like so many people who explain the alternative narrative of what really happens, you know, um, I don't even know how to, how to describe it or categorize it. But, you know, I, and I don't want to use terminology associated to um, to conspiracy theorists, you know, like the Rothschilds and, and who really controls the Federal Reserve and all this, uh, because uh, that's not what I, how I want to characterize the people who are really analyzing uh, uh, world political financial events with a more um, non-status quo, more mature human analysis of, of, uh, of, of true human motivation. Um, anyways, I'm just going to leave it like that because I don't know how to... There's always this... Uh, this uh, reference to with uh, the used through the pronoun they they are and they're actually they are and what they want is uh to control the population for example and abortion and a lot of stuff that is actually true perhaps the way that it's being characterized is is not uh you know it basically defaults to this uh they uh, as if there was an organized attempt truly by an entity that wants to govern with a precise plan uh, humanity and they have all these devious, well thought out, detailed um, schemes, you know, 
uh, to control the world. And that's what it all sounds like, right? And, and that is also what gives rise to people who say, wait a second, you know, uh, tar this conspiracy theory, lunacy, you know, I'm not going to buy it. Because in, I think all we all intuitively understand that he, we are ultimately fallible. Our civilization continues is always failing. Our inventions, our sciences, our institutions, we we have ideas and concepts and ideologies and eventually nothing turns out the way we set out to and the, or what we purport, you know, or the reasons and the noble purposes and values that are behind what we're going to do as a nation or as a political government or, I mean, as a political party. Um, and then how things pan out you know, it's almost like a wave that is always crashing with its high expectations above, which never stays up there. You know, that's the reality of civilization. If you were to take any situation and then make reference to how people were saying that period 50 years later was going to come out like, you would see that nobody was able to predict. Nothing turned out to be what many people were wanting to or saying was going to be done, you know? Um, and, okay, um, let's see. Let me pause here because I know what I want to say and I want to make it quick. Okay, I'm just going to interject with one of the thoughts I was having this morning when I woke up. I was upset still about uh, the Vanessa Marquez incident. I'm completely heartbroken when you see uh, the footage of this little girl that was anorexic. She was skin and bones. Uh, she couldn't even pick up the gun. She, she was like falling out of her hand. It was so ridiculous. And you see this, this footage uh, of her lying dead on the stairwell and these big muscular cops just sort of bobbing around her apartment. You know, how it's, um, it's unbelievable. Anyways, um, um, and I was thinking, you know, the idea of how one could state, one could say, you know, the, the state killed this girl. The state is responsible for orchestrating and systemizing uh, mental health, uh, police uh, procedure protocol, uh, the way it all gets pushed under the umbrella of authority, of state authority, and, you know, systematically they killed this girl, basically. And so I was thinking of, uh, would there be a case to build the people versus the state of California. <laughs> There's many cases that go nowhere. Uh, you know, but here we have something that is immense. And, and then I was wondering, what the, hell, what the hell is the word supreme doing in Supreme Court if it is not useful to uh, grab these huge uh, errors, these... these uh, these areas in which uh, the systemization of our institutions uh, construction result in and, uh, protect the people. Uh, it just seems that they're all following, uh, a, you know, the, this, 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 this way of having designed the world and nobody questions anything or or if if this makes of or if what they're supposed to do what they're doing in context in the context of what it's they're supposed to be doing makes any sense uh, it's like we're out of control it's like the world is actually out of control we like to think that we control and dominate and in fact that uh the police f footage of of this incident with vanessa marquez so desperately, uh, these these um, these compilations, you know, that are sent to independent journalists, and then they put them together, and they everybody wants to see was there or was there not a gun in her hand, and and so there's this little piece where you see a gun out of focus because apparently it 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 rears its 
itself from behind a wall. You can't even see if it's attached to a hand or a person. And this desperation to prove that she was dangerous. When she wasn't. She clearly was not dangerous. They could have all said, oh my God, this lady uh, with mental issues now has, is about, drew out a BB gun. Everybody get out of the house because what we're about to do in light of seeing a BB gun will result in us killing her. Let's get out of here, right? <laughs> That's not what they did. They went and killed her because she supposedly was dangerous. Like she was, you know, a terrorist, uh, or whatever, uh, you know, ambush in Iraq. Uh, our police institution is, has been spun and designed and grew out of our warring mentality. That's really the issue here. People who, uh, which is taking me to the point I want to make. Uh, people who decided how we need to tackle social problems and how to design procedure and protocol people who are thinking in terms of warring militant military america you know but we are a society it has we have there's absolutely no relation to the health the social health of a society and, and why people end up becoming irate angry frustrated uh transgressive even criminal to a war there is you know, grapes and steak. There's no comparison. And yet we have transported our warring mentality as a, as a nation into institution to act against our own people. This is really the issue. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not discovering this. There's plenty of material that talks about, for example, how we produced too much weaponry and then the police department, it was given to the police department. So now they have these these tanks, they use tanks to 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 uh, to confront people who a guy who barricades himself inside his house, and they go there with trucks and you know, I mean the picture of of this guy with a rifle. I don't know what it's the actual term is, but it has one of those telescope lenses <laughs> that you, you that rifles automatic rifles have to make sure that you see the the target uh, that you won't miss is leaning on the stair rail with this little little Vanessa up there supposedly waving a BB gun or whatever it was even if it, even if she was you know they cannot think they think we have to act a certain way if we see any kind of weapon and treat it like which means that they're not really dealing with people anymore. They're, they have to enact a protocol, regardless if it's a baby <laughs> waving a gun. Now, if, there, if it was a, a five-year-old waving a gun, I suppose at that point, our good human sense is still surviving, thank goodness, and even in these people and these police officers, and they would not follow through with protocol. Yet, a there is, was there that much of a distance between a six-year-old wielding a gun at the top of a stairwell and a mentally ill anorexic girl that just was needed help and just was afraid of, 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 of being uh, trapped, of being uh, assailed, and uh, her mind was firing in all directions. She wasn't out to attack anybody. She just really, what she really wanted was to heal and to be able to come out of that nightmare that her life would have turned into and what we what what the state ended up doing is being so inept in understanding uh, a case such as hers that they would end up killing her ki organized killing through the the collaboration of the of the ignorance the human uh the the ignorant the human the, the ignorance of human sciences of of human sociology of human psychology proper understanding of of the conditions of our people and society ignorance and uh, coordinated in our in our institutions resulted in a systematic killing of a citizen in need of medical 
care because of how we configured everything, because of how we think and how. Now, the, the, the subject I want to branch off out onto are two areas. One, uh, and they're not related. One is it's just two overlays to, to consider when analyzing the whole thing, the big picture of the whole of our world condition, or the condition of our civilization. One is that um, people like Chris Hedges and, and many others, intelligent people uh, who are talking with pronouns, because there are, there is people who talk about politics like uh, Richard Wolff that uh, teach about socialism and, you know, and but they're not so concentrated on on a group of people that are planning and doing and they doing this and they doing that or you know the different uh the vatican is you know you know there's this class of people that they 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 and then there's people who uh are also intelligent but they are they uh more uh, they're more able to uh, um def you know, define or uh, 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 finding the human element, the group of, of, of decision decision makers, and therefore that, that that have intentions that we would not, that we don't commonly think, that we don't believe. You know, like we all get fooled by by the president's America is doing great, and this is going to blow over. Nothing's going to happen with this virus, and you know, all of us, we all have, we all kind of want to believe that everything is sane, that our leaders are sane, that they know what they're doing. And then when you see all the the subsequent um, presentations of the, uh, of the president, the interviews, um, you start seeing that they change their tune or they also are caught, uh, they are caught not knowing what that uh, revealing that they they not know so well what was going on before, and then you remember yourself actually a part of you uh, having wanting to wanting to have believed, having to, having wanted to believe uh, how he was sounding the a month before, and now you feel foolish because you realize you too just want to, although we may be critical, judgmental, and, 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 and reiterate or rehash all this, you know, these people are idiots, they don't know, really, they don't know what they're doing, and they're just putting up a front to maintain the, the, the status quo, to maintain their position, their perception before, before people, but yet we can't help being naturally, um, naturally seeking of respect towards leadership and of course that means that their leadership is abusive because it's taking advantage that people want to need to trust them uh in order to hide their mistakes behind a facade of of uh, proper presence but what i'm getting at is that um you know this that there isn't a they <laughs> I'll just get to the point. There isn't a, a group of people, like I said before, why do we continue to fail as a civilization or, or, or say things and propose things and purport that we're going, we have these big ambitions, social, political, what have you, and then we end up demonstrating that the world ended up doing something completely different. Because in reality, the destiny and the form of the world is the added um the added addition <laughs> the result of every one of our every every one of our seven billion people that we are individually decisions at a certain point that mattered if we could if we could look at humanity like a map of decision willful decision before question that occurs in every person's life at every instant in every moment in history what we would see is a bunch of little chips that are turning over like uh like those uh i don't know what you call them those 
<laughs> what you call them? They're like you know, um, little art, I don't know, like toys or something. They, they fl little chips that that are set on a on a on a bar and they spin <laughs> like those counters, you know. Um, anyways, we are nothing but really just what happens through each one of these tiny little decisions, each step of the way of everything that gets done. And what I mean is, and how, okay, how I got to this conclusion perhaps will explain better what I'm trying to say. If we were to say uh, the state, the people against the state of California for what they did to uh, Vanessa Marquez, and that lead to a governor or a police chief at some level fessing up and calling out the with a with a sense of deep understanding and broad understanding of, of, of uh, the, the bigger picture of the situation regarding not just the police alone but how how the government is uh, instigating or sending people or or giving messages or instructing that things need to be uh, certain things need to be accomplished or done a certain way and so were to fess up uh for the country to say well this is what's happening and uh, what we would find is that the human being reacts against authority being vulnerable because the 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 the, the point of uh, the point of the gun in other words would have to be we were to blame we are we are, we faulted we attacked our own citizens we are wrong we were wrong we ended up killing our own people and as far as the, the police in other words and that would cause fear and worry in politicians more than in the police institution itself where a police chief would have the bravery to really present uh, not uh, in all seriousness and maturity such a statement uh, of admission and he could only do it because he knows that the state is the, the police institution at, at the same time in turn is created by the state and and, and who decides what kind of uh, training they're going to have and who are the people that are going to go there to head and lead and and develop the, the ways and the uh, that will lead to the development of procedures and meth methods and so forth i mean it all comes from above and so they could probably get a you know find that more plausible as a possibility but which would leave them in a in a in a position where all of a sudden the buck would fall on on the state and of course we can anticipate that there would be fear just like i see in this picture of trump and the health minister and whoever else is uh in that picture, his son-in-law, they all look um, worried because what they don't see is we're all afraid of um, questioning that which we believe must have the right, the authority. We are, we are subconsciously reactive to and, and what is it so so in other words the reasoning uh, in, in the state would be well if the people all of a sudden heard us blame the, the police and saying that the police has messed up we 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 made a mistake in how we made the police they're screwing up and they're hurting people instead of helping them they're all going to get crazy and they're all going to start acting up and they're going to lose respect and their criminal criminality is going to go up that's what we expect 
would be the, the reason, the justification why the state or a police chief would never uh, admit before the public that there, there was a serious critical error and mistake and resulting in, in injury being committed against the people because then the people would have the right. They would be righteously correct in, in getting upset or having a reason to 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 uh, to uh, re uh, can't think of it. I, can, I always my vocabulary always goes out the window and I can't but in any case um, when I do these so where does this come from why would the state or the police chief believe that then people will just take advantage of it and start acting up and behaving worse and criminality would go up and, and all order would, 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 all hell would break loose and people would start speeding in the, in the streets, and, you know, this is kind of the, the subconscious fear that uh, authority would have in admitting it is mistaken and it's going, it's, it's screwing up, it's going about things the wrong way. And where does this fear come from? This fear basically has been inherited by um, by uh, thousands, millions <laughs> of lives and, and thousands and hundreds of thousands of generations that uh, entire a world of cultures has been raising all our children and our subsequent adults to believe uh, narratives of a uh, of a th authoritative God or authoritative authorities, political authorities, kings, and what have you, but of uh, that need to punish, control, or subdue the ill acting uh, occurrence of a man. In other words. You know, and for example, Christianity says that basically we're we're tempt, we are uh, faulted, we're born in sin, and so thank goodness God appears and gives us the right way, because we inherently are born to screw up, to hurt, and God is trying to make us better, and so we need to be aware of our temptations, and and so in so many different ways, in so many different ways, we start as a humanity, not before a difficult challenge that we are inherently capable of handling, but we start before a condition of, uh, of unexplained uh, uh, failure by some at a given moment or from birth or because of temptation and the devil or because uh, eventually we break down and we can easily go astray, but there is this random uh, wild uh, possibility that we have to be on the lookout for the bad, erring, destructive, criminal human being. And so the world is divided uh, in, 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 in the possibility of us doing all right having things under control, being tamed, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> domesticated, and the other population of random, unexplained, who cares from where, God knows, He, ex God explains it, or it's just the way it is, <laughs> people who we have to look out for because they will destroy everything, or they will kill somebody, or, or you know, <laughs> And so, and that of course reflects a lack of uh, unit, human collective consciousness as us all being the same, starting on a situation that equally challenges all of us. And all of us therefore are capable, are, uh, are just as capable, especially when united to become strong before that challenge that we all share commonly, which is a completely different starting point. But because we've never been educated uh, 
as a world for all those millions and millions of generations or people and lives, what determines what we eventually... Okay, this is also an explanation. And because uh, what eventually determines our motivation is the build-up, the layers of subconscious prejudices in a benign use of the word. It's all preconceived notions, preconceived notions based on what we've learned at some point in the past. Everything that we think has been taught to us. Everything that we know, everything that we will conclude is, is, the, is a result of a, a build-up, a construction that has taken our whole lifetime from the world, from school, from our family, from a friends, from people we trusted, believed in, or from what we concluded and, and reasoned is the reason for, everything has been educated into us. And so everything that we will decide and why, why the state would say, no, we can't let people ever think that the police are totally screwed up and, and our, our systems are failing and they're, they're, we're hurting and harming instead of building a good society. We could never let them know that. The reason they're motivated to feel that way is because of how we have been raising ourselves as a humanity to believe about existence and the human condition. So everything is really in our hands to have a different understanding of the human condition and start and now start educating our children and our generations with a truthful, realistic understanding of humanity, not one that is based on ideas and ideologies and stories and narratives that answer things that perhaps have always been difficult and, and, and challenging for us to hold you know, as integral comprehension of our human existential condition, with the hopes that in time, uh, not with the hopes, with the, with the definite result that in time, we the 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 subconscious uh, layers that will bring about our future, the motivation towards our future reasoning and decisions will be built differently. Will be uh, we will no longer, for example, seek to blame single people and punish them because they are erring, but we will, we will be a wiser civilization that understands why that happened to that citizen, why that happened to that person, what in society, what in the workings of the human mind has resulted in that person feeling or doing that or behaving that way or finding themselves in that situation. We will not go directly towards, we gotta, we gotta, pin it and peg it all on that person and punish them and send them in jail, crucify them, you know. Uh, we would no longer be that humanity. We would be a humanity that understands what happens to us and what happens to each one of our individuals. And that would take some time, of course. We would have to start educating generations, all of us, with a different understanding of our human condition. And the other notion is that it really doesn't get done by anybody leading because our human brain is not very capable of thinking for everybody in the world or for large groups of people. Uh, we are geared to survive individually, save ourselves, save our own skin for the survival of the species. We have a collective uh, need to bring, always bring the collective together or, or have empathy or think of the well, need the well-being of others for our own survival. And so the collective has a way of, of staying together and prioritizing the survival of the species, but that is done through uh, the selfish need of each one of our own strong and very sharp thinking uh, uh, desire and need to survive individually. So we're all used by evolution to make the collective survive. So there is a desire in altru a natural altruistic empathetic empathy is, is studied and understood in science. A need to keep everybody well and not punish and hurt or kill anybody because we all want this collective to, to survive as a priority. Now, what we end up 
how we end up behaving has to do with what I just explained, has to do with what we have all evolved uh, or ed evolved educationally to believe describes our human existential condition. And so we have all these explanations that now that have resort, uh, resorted to having, can only being able to explain situations by mainly blaming others and uh, creating. So in, we, are, we, just, we are not capable of uh, ordering the world collectively. We want to, we obviously want to be able to order and administrate the world collectively, but that is not the nature of our intelligence. We would always start neglecting. Groups of people would always start appearing that are falling out of the plan, and they're we leave. We get used to leaving people behind. Oh well, you know we're just messed up that way. There will always be bad people. There will always be suffering, hungry people, poor people. You know we we must give ourselves peace by uh, creating narratives that explain what are really our failures. Uh, we are not prone to acknowledge, we cannot acknowledge that we fail because that would go against the, the, the direct, the prime directive, sort of a, a, the survival of the integral species. And yet, our, because we're governed and led by the individual nature of the individual survival intelligence, uh, and we must answer questions logically to comprehend nature and our existence and how everything it must, must be explained by the human. We end up satisfying uh, the imperfection of uh, our civilization, uh, of the creation of our civilization with uh, logical failure. Oh, well, it's because, you know, some of us are born that way and uh, some of us are just destined to be poor and suffer, and you know. Uh, uh, so we have to realize that we're never going to be able to order uh, collectively through the individual logic of the individual of the single thinking mind. But we can't, we are all the result of infinite amount of decisions along the lives of each one of us that decide their willful motivated response to each and every situation that is put put before them. So somewhere along, if you want to understand anything that happens in society, you could, all you have to do basically, and this doesn't mean that we have to control what everybody decides, it means that we have to educate the human collective along a, a area and atmosphere of values and principles so that those decisions are made with certain character and certain way of thinking in, in a generalized sense without having to make anybody decide anything any way in any particular certain way. But if you were to want to understand a, a social situation anyway, all you have to anywhere is all you have to do is say, well, why did they, why did they storm her apartment? Why did 12 police officers over weaponized storm into um, this, this little girl with mental issues, anorexic, completely confused uh, house. Why did they storm? Why did they try to drag her by force to show up at the clinic or whatever they wanted to do? Um, you can answer each one. Well, so, there's always somebody that says, well, uh, you know, you, if you put everybody to the test of what if they said no? What if he said no? What if they said no? What if she said, what if he said no? He could not have said no because he had to do what this person whose job it is to for that person to do that uh, would told him to do. Did I say that right? Okay. So you could trace everybody to a, a person of ultimate call uh, of calling the, sh uh, the, the requirement. Every, every situation that you want to break down, why did that happen? You could trace it to somebody who ultimately had the authority 
and had and gave a directive to do that. And when you get to that person, you say, well, why didn't that person question um, doing things that way? Well, because he would have had to turn around and it's a trickle up um, theorem, if you will. Uh, that person would have had to question the person that instructed him to do things that way and say, well, this is resulting in that, sir, and it's wrong. <laughs> and so the person above that person would have said, would have had to have said, yeah, you're right, it's wrong. And they would have found somebody else. And, and above them, in, in life, it doesn't end anywhere. It doesn't start anywhere. Everybody, the president, <laughs> They do what they do because somewhere they believe they need to do something said to them or established by another person. And like that, it's all like I was saying, these millions of little chips that fly around responding to the belief in the instruction or directive or educational point, if you want to call it, of another person who felt they needed to answer a question. And it just spreads out like that in all directions. There isn't anybody, nobody's in charge. Nobody is, there isn't, and we can't. We're incapable, actually. Uh, we have to educate ourselves within, which we try to do, actually. Somehow we kind of know we have to do that because the, the, the uh, intellectual area or the human sciences area of religions and spirituality principles, moral, social, moral, ethical uh, values uh, or spiritual values have created, uh, you know, either religions or, you know, judicial institutions based on philosophical thinkers or what have you. But there's a part of us that creates a sector of of civilization that tries to correct what we are incapable of doing right, which is the actual logical construct of uh, reasoned intelligence, our inventions, our you know whether it's a car or a government or or any kind of logic that we put together is led by the uh, the individuals self-survival intelligence, which is very sharp, narrow, thrusting forward, but completely inept in extending to comprehend the infinite variations of other lives. So it's always going to fail, and before nature it fails, because it doesn't know how creation came to have the forms that it does either. So we fail uh, in creating the environment, the proper social environment, human social environment for mankind, because we didn't design life we didn't design creation so we we feel we understand it and we know a certain amount of things that are naturally required but ultimately we find that mankind is uncomfortable with the design of his own uh institutions and, and his own world and so part of us realizes that and we create things that try to uh, uh, uh teach us in values and behavior and morality and principles who try to say, well, we shouldn't behave or do things for those reasons or that way, because we understand that it leads to wars where we kill our own children. So we need to have compassion and empathy and understanding. So there's like a, uh, a confrontation. What we end up ends up being uh, analogous it come out, comes out in an analogous form is government versus religion. Uh, religion says, be good, don't kill your own kind. And government says, no, we've got to kill our own kind because our nation has got to survive. And so the logic of, of nation building confronts the, the, the humanity of religion in a place that they don't talk in reality. <laughs> they never had a conversation to say the truth ever. So we need to understand that we have to develop a, 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 a school of thought uh, of, 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 of principles, of, of, of morality, of spirit, of a 
forms of spirituality and even re religiosity perhaps could be defined that teach us how to survive as a humanity given the difficulty of our limitations not how to survive as a humanity before the enemy man <laughs> the enemy of an, uh, the other person that will hurt you when you're not expecting them but how to survive it which religions kind of try to do but then they contradict themselves don't they i mean religions teach on one hand they they seem to teach how to re think of mankind's predicament humanity as a whole so that humanity can all treat itself well right and then it contradicts itself and it says that because in humanity you'll find your own enemy what and so who's teaching that own enemy <laughs> who's we shouldn't consider how do we find that person and so there's a whole explanation the devil you know captured some or whatever but nobody no house of of human science morality if we want to call it that instead of religion has yet understood that we are simply endowed with an intelligence that is greater than our nature is able to handle and so we, the first thing we need to look out for is our our own error our own fumbling fumbling this ball that is too large for our hands and so that's the first thing we got to expect is that where are we not where are we going to misdesign and think wrongly about the first goal which is maintaining everybody together everybody healthy not blaming anybody not condemning anybody not uh neglecting or forgetting people you know in any way that's that being our first directive so like star trek says uh we would have to as a first step be looking out for the uh the 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 inadequacy of of performing with our intelligence each of us all of us equal that way none of us could run the world <laughs> or a country <laughs> as we've proven <laughs> none of us can run a country ever has been able to run a country really you know in a way that everybody is healthy everybody shares in the fruits of our capacity and our potential equally we've all failed so knowing that then everything that we would think about how to uh, how to create our world design our administrative ways would always have that in mind always have that in mind says whoop are we forgetting somebody is this who's is that going to work for that those people what about these people and we never leave anybody behind that way because we always keep in mind <laughs> don't forget <laughs> we can't handle this it's we're expecting the error we're expecting where we're gonna not care about what happens to this person or that person okay good morning <laughs> good morning everybody and thanks for listening